entire 2023 DCE. So the question was saying, I'm sure we have this question at hand. I'm sure we have this question in our phone. So mean that the way I'll be writing the question, I won't write all the statement. I'll just write the summary of the question. So we have been given that um, it's saying in given that given that P so this P it's a matrix, okay? Matrix P is we have four. Let me increase the phone to this. We have four. Then we have two down here. This is a four. Then we have negative one. Zero. Zero. Three. Like that. Then we have been given Q to be one, two, and three, like that. Okay. So the first question is we need to find P raised to power T. Anyone with an idea? What does it mean when they say P raised to power T? Madam Faustina, do you have any idea the meaning of P raised to power T? I'm not so sure. I don't know if it's transverse or reciprocal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So P raised to power T means the same word which you said earlier on, transpose. Okay? This is transpose. What is the meaning of P transpose? If you are transposing the matrix, what are you supposed to do? So what we are supposed to do is that, remember in a matrix, we, are, we have what we call rows and columns. Okay? So rows, these are horizontal arrangement of entries in a matrix. Columns, these are vertical. So these are the rows. Okay? So we have, this is in short, this is row one. And then this is the row two. This is row two. Okay? So now, as we are coming up with a transpose, we need to turn the rows to become the columns. We make the rows to become the columns. So meaning that row one, it will become the first column. So we'll write it as four. And then we we'll go to negative one, then we we'll come to zero. Then row two will become the second column, which is two, zero, and three. I'll cross it like that. So this is our answer. Very simple, very simple. And it's even a single mark, one mark. So we just turn the rows to become the columns. When we make the rows to become the columns, it simply means that the column will become the rows. That's how we do it. And let's see if there's anyone with a question for me. Yes, Rachel. So, if you can just repeat a bit, because I didn't listen, my network was a bit tripping here. All right, okay. So, Rachel, what I'm saying is, for us to find P transpose, remember P raised to power T, P represent a transpose. P represent the matrix which has been given. So, to find P transpose, we need to turn the rows to become the columns. When we do that, it simply means that even the columns will become the rows. We are exchanging. So the simple way I've explained it is that I've indicated the rows which are there. There are two rows. Okay? So we have row one. This is row one there and row two down there. Now, if this is the case, we are saying this row one will become column one. Row two will become column two. The way I've written it there. So that's how we found the P 
be transposed. Do you have an idea now, Rachel? Give me a feedback. Okay, thank you very much. Then we'll go to question C. Which is question B, sorry. We'll go to question B. So question B is saying we found P2. We need to calculate PQ. So remember PQ at the middle of this letter. There is a multiplication sign. So meaning, meaning that in this case, we just need to multiply matrices. We need to know how to multiply matrix. Very important. We need to know how to multiply matrices. But before I, I continue, uh, Mr. Emmanuel has raised up a hand. Yes, Mr. Emmanuel. Go ahead. Mr. Emmanuel, you can go ahead with your question. I don't know what is happening on the. I don't know if it is your camera or is my network here. I can't see anything. Can't see anything. I'm saying, <coughs> I was asking if it is it's just network or if there is. Uh, I can't see anything. I can't see anything which you are writing. Okay, let me get a feedback yeah, from Ryan. Now I can okay, able to see. Now you're able to see? Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes, I'm able to see now. Okay, wonderful. Okay. So now, what I'm saying is, uh, to find PQ, simply means that we just multiply matrix P with matrix Q. Okay. So now, what I've done is I've written matrix P. This is matrix P. This is matrix Q. So we are going to multiply matrix P by matrix Q. Yes, Mr. Mr. Emmanuel. Your hand is up again. Yes, Mr. Emmanuel. Uh, it's okay. It's fine. Oh, okay. All right. It's fine. I'm clear. Not All right. Yes. So we need now to multiply. Remember when we are multiplying matrices, we need to multiply rows by columns. Rows by columns. So mean that we are going to multiply 4 times 1, and then negative 2 times 2, then 0 by 3, like that. Okay? So now, let's try and multiply in that order which I've said. So if we say 4, times 1. This 4 we multiply with this one here. Okay? So 4 times 1 you agree with me to say the answer is 4. Thereafter, we come to negative 2. Negative 2 times 2, you agree with me to say the answer is negative 2. Like that. And then we come to this 0. 0 times 3. 0 times 3, the answer is 0. So I'll write like that. So after multiplying the first row by the column in the second matrix, we we'll now go to the second row and do the same. Okay? We we'll now use the same principle on the second row. So meaning that we we'll multiply these two by one. So two times one, the answer is two. And then from there, we we'll multiply zero by two. 0 times 2, the answer is positive 0. And then from there, we'll go to 3 times 3, which is 9. Like that. Okay? And then when we simplify this, we are going to have 4 minus 2 plus 0. The answer is 2. Then 2 plus 9, you agree with me to say, the answer is 11. Like that. So this is our answer. So now, before I comment what, what I want to comment, I want to find out whether there is someone who is behind. Anyone who is behind? Okay. So now, what I want to comment is this. Under matrices paper one, this is a concept which the examiner brings most of the time. 
transpose is always there, which is a very simple way of calculating matrices. There's no way we can fill transpose. Okay? Also, mod multiplication. Most of the time, they bring multiplication. In rare cases, they also bring some concept of addition, how you, you need to add some matrices. So, in short, what I'm emphasizing is, as you're preparing for matrices under paper 1, don't waste your time with a determinant. Determinant comes under paper 2. So, with paper 1, emphasize mostly on how to transpose a matrix and how to multiply or add a matrix in your home and dry. Meaning that these three marks is yours. And let's see if there's any question for me. Any question for me before I go to question to question eight? Royce, do you have any question for me? Okay, Royce says she's okay. Mr. Emmanuel, do you have any question for me? Okay, he's okay. All right, then we can proceed. So let's go to the next question, which is question eight. What is involved under question eight? So question eight, it is KP, arithmetic progression. We have KP and GP. So it's saying an arithmetic progression, which is an AP. So I would just say an AP, abbreviation of arithmetic progression. And I believe you have this question with you. So an AP is given is given as so we have one comma seven seven comma thirteen like that one comma seven comma thirteen and then the first question they want us to find the eight p term okay so I'll say p eight sorry I've written it finished. P8. So the ATP term. They want us to find the ATP term. So, as I was saying, under this topic, there are normally two subtopics under the, the same very topic. It's either it's you have an AP or a GP. Okay, so this is an AP, and we need to be conversant with the AP. So what we need to know with AP is that there is a formula for arithmetic progression for any any term, which is okay. Tn for remember this is for any any term. So Tn is equal to is equal to a plus open bracket n minus 1 cross times b so this is the formula for the nth term of an ap so where a is the first term okay a is the first term so what i'll do is this so i'll say where 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 a, where a is the first term. So where do you get the first term? You go to the sequence given. First term simply means that the first number or the first entry in the sequence. Okay? So if a is the first term or the first number, who can tell me the value of a? Rachel, what's the value of a in this case? So repeat the question again. Okay. So I'm saying we need to identify the value of A, N, and B for us to find the A to be term. Now I'm saying A, it's always the first number of the sequence. So now in this sequence that I've been given, 1, 7, 13, up to infinity, what can be the value of A? The value of A is 1. It's 1 indeed. Okay? 
So the value of A is one. Thank you for that, Rachel. So what we'll do is, since we know to say the value of A is one, how about the value of N? How about the value of N? Remember, N, it is an nth term. The nth term that we are looking for. So in this case, we are looking for the 80th term. Okay? We are looking for the 80th term. So mean that the value of N, it is actually 8. Okay? It is 8. I'll write that. And then D. D is a common difference. D is a common difference. So in short, what number have they added on 1 to have 7, which is a thing? Okay? So in short, to find the common difference, we can say 7 minus 1 or 13 minus 7. The answer will still be the same number, which is 6. So before I proceed with the substitution, is there anyone with a question for me on how we have identified the value of A, the value of N, and the, and the value of D? Any question for me? Okay. If we are okay, then let's go with the substitution. Let's continue with the substitution. So remember, we are looking for the eighth term. Okay? We are looking for the eighth term. So we need to know how to substitute and where to substitute. Very important. We need to know how to substitute and where to substitute. So, all right. Just a minute. Just want to change the ink color. Want to bring a green a bit. Okay. So, we say the edit term is equal to we have the first term which is one and then plus submit I've received the notification okay plus and then open bracket the value of n it's eight and then we have minus one close bracket times d which is a six I'm moving step by step with my substitution. Where there is A, we put 1. Where there is N, we put 8. Then where, the, where there is D, we put 6. From there, the only thing remaining is for us to simplify and multiply. So we are going to have 1 plus. So let's first start with what is inside the bracket. Okay? Of which 8 minus 1, it is 7. So I'll write 7 and then multiply by 6. So this is equal to, so remember now, we have 1 plus. So we need to multiply 7 times 6, which is 42. Which is 42. Of which when you simplify 1 plus 42, you agree with me to say the answer is 43. Like that. So that's a, this is how we are supposed to calculate the 80th term. And let's see if there's a question for me before we go to the sum of the first 15th term, which is question 8b. Any question for me? Oh. Yes, Madam Faustina. Okay, sir. So like when you found the difference, which is a six. Mm, like this forty-three that you found, the eighth. If if you were to prove it, is it like if we were to write numbers from one, one, seven, thirteen, then 
each difference we add the six. Mm-hmm. Is, is it still giving us a 43 as the 80th term or you just have to go about with the same formula and everything? Okay. So if you want to prove your answer with respect to our what you have explained, Madam Faustina, yes, it will give us 43, the 80th term. Okay? So what you can do is, on your own, try and continue adding a 6. Okay? Try to, to continue adding a 6 until you reach only the number 80. Okay? Until you reach on the 80th term, you'll find that the answer will be 43. Now, now, the reason why that method is very tedious is because sometimes the same examiner may choose to give you maybe to find the 20th term or the 30th term. So mean that it, it will be very tedious for us to do it in the traditional way like that. Okay? But for now, maybe you can try to use the traditional way of just adding 13 plus 6 answer again plus six the answer the answer again plus six until you reach on the eighth term you will find that the answer will give you 43 i don't know whether i've explained something give me a feedback yes madam Faustina. okay i have understood what you've explained so like the same tradition as you call it yeah. <laughs> it has no problem or um, you just have to show the formula. Is it about the formula, how you've solved it, or the same traditional way can still give you an answer which can gain you a mark? Oh, I see now. Okay, now I've gotten you. Okay. Uh, normally, what I can advise you is to use the root of the formula. And then the traditional way, you can only use it maybe for proving. The reason why I'm saying so is because when the examiner are marking, Remember with paper one, there is normally a space for answer where you are supposed to write your, your answer from. Other than that, there is a space where you need to do your calculation. So the examiner is not only interested in your final answer, but even on the method that you have used. That's the reason why, just in case you have come across certain final exam papers that have solutions, especially if at all the solutions are coming from, from the marker center. They do indicate my M, okay? For example, M1, M2, those are the method marks which they put. The method that you have used. So what I can advise you, Madam Faustina, is at least I can advise you to, to use the root of the formula. Just know the formula. Because the advantage of knowing the formula as well is maybe sometimes you'll be given to find the nth term of a big number. For example, 50th term. It will be very tedious for you just to be, to be adding. Remember, you're not allowed even to use a calculator, by the way. This is paper one. Unless if I thought it was paper two where we know we are just adding here and there. Okay? So I can advise you to use uh, the formula way. So that at least on the method, you can get the method, the mark for the method, and also the mark for the answer, so that you can get the whole two marks. I don't know whether you are okay with my explanation, Madam Faustina. Give me a feedback. Thank you very much. Okay, so we go to B. B is saying we find the sum. Let me erase this. B is saying we find the sum. Okay, so we need to appreciate the meaning of the sum. So we are saying, uh, let me write B. B is saying sum, sum of, sum of the first, sum of the first 15th term. So I'll write 15 as as a number but it has been written in letter form okay some of the first 15th term so this one also we need to appreciate the formula for the sum of ap okay 
So all in all, what I can advise you is that remember these topics in paper one, AP, AP, GP, they don't miss. There's no you can have a math paper one without matrices about transpose and how to multiply or add. There's no way. It's always there. Even on the AP, it's either AP or GP. So we need to be comfortable with these two terms. Very important. So with AP, we first need to sketch the formula, which is the sum by writing Sn, sum is equal to n over 2, like that. Then I'll use these brackets, then 2n plus, open bracket, n minus 1, close, and then d, close. Okay? Where... We also need to appreciate the values of A, the value of A, we need to appreciate it, the value of D, sorry, the value of N, and the value of D. We need to know them so that we can easily substitute. Okay, so with what I've done so far, maybe there's someone with a question for me. Any question for me? Madam Maria, you are welcome. You are welcome. Hope you are following. Give me feedback, Madam Maria. Are you following? Are you okay? Yes, sir. I'm okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. You're welcome, Madam. Okay. Okay. So now, A, it's always the first term. As usual. A, it's always the first term. Whether it's AP, GP. First term. Can you come again, Madam Postina? I can't see the board. Can't this is when I'm saying it. Okay. Not being in the board. Okay, it's how about others? Royce, are you able to see the board? Okay, Royce, she's able to see the board. Madam Marie, are you able to see the board? Okay, she's able to see. Rachel, are you able to see the board? Okay, she's able. Madam Fosina, I feel it's network on your end. Okay. Okay. So if you don't mind, maybe try to exit and then you you, you, you come back first so that you, you cross check. Okay. So now, the value of A, we said it's the first term. First term, we simply mean that the first number or the first entry of who? The sequence, in this sequence that have been given, what is the first number? That first number is the value of A, which is 1. N here, it's the nth term. So in this case, the question is saying we find the sum of the first 15th term. 15th term. So this simply means that N is 15. Okay? N is 15. Common difference, we know to say the common difference is 6 because we are saying 7 minus 1, which is 6, or 13 minus 7, which is 6. Like that. Now, you can just go ahead, substitute, and find the sum of the first 15th term. Let's go ahead with the substitution. So we shall say sum. Sum of the first uh, 15, I can even write 15 down here, is equal to n, it is 15, over 2, over 2. And then now, I'll write these brackets. And then inside, I shall say I have 2. And then open bracket times 1, I close, plus, and then n. It's 15. So wherever there is N, we are putting 15. Then D, it's 6. Like that. Remember, guys, this is paper 1. Paper 1, how you simplify matters. Madam Maria, the way you are simplifying paper 1, calculation is very important. Remember, you are not allowed to use a calculator. 
okay so what we'll do is let's just find the values of what is inside these brackets okay let's try to multiply for us to come up with it sorry uh, for us to come up with their values so meaning that i'll say is equal to so we have 15 over 2 okay 15 over 2 and then we have now 2 times 1 can you agree with me to say the answer is 2 and then we go to uh, 15 minus 1 okay which is a 14 so 14 times the 6 like that so having done this we need to continue further knowing what is inside the, the smaller brackets so we need to still multiply 14 times 6 we need to continue multiplying 14 times 6 very important remember the way we are simplifying we need to start with the brackets which are inside as we are going to the brackets which are outside that's the reason why deliberately I've differentiated the bracket inside from the bracket outside. Okay? Madam Grace, you're welcome. So mean that you have the sum of the first 15th term. Okay? So I've written S15 like that to be 15, 15 over 2. And then now I'll say we have 2 plus we have two plus now we need to multiply 14 times 6 14 times 6 what is 14 times 6 Royce what is 14 times 6 who is able to multiply first but please do not use the calculator what is 14 times 6 84 can you come again, Royce? 84. 84. Thank you very much, please. 84. Thank you very much. 84 indeed. So I will write 84. 84. Like that. Okay. So at this juncture, we just continue simplifying. You can agree with me to say I'm moving step by step. Slow but sure. Okay? Slow but sure. So we'll continue simplifying. So I'll say is equal to this side. So we have 15 over 2. So we continue with what is inside the bracket. So 84 times 84 plus 2, the answer is 86. Okay? Like that. We continue. Remember at this stage that we have reached now, we can cancel out. We can divide this 2 into 86. Okay? We can divide it 2 into 86. So we we'll say 2 into 4, sorry, 2 into 8 is 4. 2 into 6, it is 3, like that. So mean that we have 15 times 43. 15 times 43. So when you multiply 15 times 3, so remember how to multiply this. We'll say 43 by 15. Like that. That concept, how you, how to multiply this. So when you multiply this, you agree with me to say the final answer will be 645, which is the sum for the first 15th term. That is the answer. For the sum of the first 15th term. And let's see if there's someone who is behind. Please tell me before we go to question 9. Any question? Okay, I'm sure we are okay. Let's go to question 9. What is question 9 saying? Nine is probability. So even probability the point does not miss. And I'm sure you can agree with me to say I taught probability as a topic. 
So it's something that I don't expect us to have a lot of challenges. So it's saying in a bar. So instead of writing the entire question, because I said this, since I posted this, I'm sure you have questions with you. Since I shared this paper. So I'll just make a summary. So this shape which I've drawn, I'll assume that it's a bag. So in this bag, we have four blue marbles. So I'll write four, which are blue. Four blue marbles. And three, so three I'll say equal to, which are red. Red marbles. And two, two which are white. White marbles, like that. So in total, in this bag, we have four plus three, which is seven plus two, which is nine marbles. Nine marbles in total. So in total, we have nine marbles. So for the case of those without uh, a question, let me just read it. It says in a bag there are four blue marbles. I've written four is equal to blue. Three red marbles. I've written three is equal to red. And two white marbles. And then the, the question is saying, what is the probability of picking at random a red marble? What is the probability of picking a red marble? Anyone with an idea? What is the final answer? What's the probability of picking the red marble? What can be our answer in this case? Madam Faustina, what do you think? Four seven nine. What is the probability of picking a red map? Hey, isn't it one over one over nine? Is it one over nine? Okay, but where is one coming from? There, there were. Um, the the red marble that we are picking out from the total of nine marbles. So red marbles, there are how many? There are three. There are three. Okay. So since the red marbles there are three, mean that we need to write the three. Have you seen that? Oh, three over nine. Yes, three over nine. So, per bit of red is equal to number of red marbles. Number of red marbles over total number of marbles. Over total marbles. So, number of red marbles. How many red marbles are there? There are three. So, we shall say three over how many total number of marbles in this bag? It's see, nine. But again, it's very much advisable for you to simplify your answer. Because there is a number which can go into 3. The same number can go into 9. And that number is what? A 3. So we shall say 3 into a 3, it's 1. 3 into 9, it's 3. So it will give us 1 over 3 as the final answer. Let me just write 1 over 3 that because you have said three into one is three three into nine is three so the final answer is one over three like that and let's see if there's a question for me any question for me Rachel do you have any question for me Okay, she says she's okay. Madam Grace, you're welcome. Do you have any question for me? No, it's there. Okay, thank you. We move. So question. my question is on the number eight. The, the, the one that you have just finished. Maybe if you can post the video. All right, okay. I'll do so. This time around. I'll, I'll do so before sleeping, because if I sleep tomorrow, 
maybe I might be okay. So I'll do it before sleeping. I will even the previous video for the two to three weeks that we did, I will upload them together. I'll upload them together plus this one. I'll I'll do the midweek manifest. Okay, so we go to uh, to the other question, which is of course it's question nine, but nine B. So question nine B is saying we need to solve an equation. Okay. The situation where we are solving a quadratic equation, which is 2x two, two squared and then plus x minus 3 is equal to a 0. 2x squared plus x minus 3 is equal to a 0. Of which, even how to factorize, it's something I believe which I labored on as a topic last time, where we need to find the product, the sum, and the, the factor. That's what I said last time. Okay? To factorize. I labored it last time, where we need to find the product, sum, and the factor. Of which I said, to find the product, we need to multiply A times C. So when you, when you multiply 2 times z, c, so 2, a is 2, c is negative 3. So when you multiply this, the answer will give us negative, negative 6. You agree with me to say the answer will be negative 6. And then now, s, it's a value of the coefficient of, of x here, the value of b, which is just the 1. And then factors, we need to look for two numbers in such a way that when we multiply them, they give us negative 6. When we add or subtract, they give us 1. You, you agree with me to say the factors are 3 and negative 2. 3 and negative 2. Because when we say 3 times negative 2, the answer is negative 6. 3 minus 1, the answer is 1. Of which these factors, I said, we need to rewrite them in form of a variable that we are having. A variable or a letter that we are having. Or in short, we just multiply these factors by x. Where we say 3 times x, the answer is 3x. And then negative 2 times x, the answer is negative. The answer is negative 2x like that. After having done this, then we go back to our expression, where right now we have 2x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 3 is equal to a 0. So I've substituted where there is x, I've substituted the value or everything where there is x by the factors, okay? I've removed x and then replaced it with the 3x minus 2x. So at this stage that we have reached, is there anyone with a question for me? Anyone with a pending question for me before I move to the next stage? Okay. If there is nine, if there is no one, then let's continue. So at this stage, we need to factorize them well, we shall group them two to the way they are, and then we look for a common factor. Okay, so 2x squared plus 3x, the common factor there we have x. Okay, the common factor is x, and then now we say x open bracket x into 2x squared, the answer is 2x. Okay, and then now. We also divide x into positive 3x. You agree with me to say the answer is 3. And then now we, we go to the last um, uh, the last two factors. Of which what is common here is just negative 1. Okay, negative 1 is common. Because remember that there is no any letter which is on both of the two terms. So we just 
bring the negatives outside because both terms have the negatives. Then we say negative 1 into negative 2x, the answer is positive 2x, and then negative 1 into negative 3, the answer is positive 3 is equal to 0, like that. And then here I said we need to make sure that whatever it's here, it's also there. Very important. We need to cross-check. If at all they are not the same, I said it simply means that our calculations are not correct. So since what is inside is the same, then we'll take one of it. So I'll say open bracket. Okay. Open bracket. And then from there, we shall say we have, we have 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3. And then we need to close like that. And then whatever it's outside will bring them together. So what is outside will bring them together like that. So mean that when you reach at this stage, simply mean that we have factorized. We have factorized. But what is the question saying? The question is saying it solve the equation. Meaning that we need to come up with the values of x. So we shall continue from here. Unless if at all it was saying factorize, we would have ended from here. And the question is saying solve the equation. So we we'll continue from here where we equate 2x, 2x plus 3. We we'll equate it to 0. We we'll equate it to 0. Or we shall say x minus 1, we also equate it to 0. So we are equating both 2x plus 3 into 0 and x minus 1 into a 0, like that. And then from here now, we, ju we just correct the like terms. 3 will come this side. So mean that we are going to remain with 2x is equal to negative 3. So I will take the first part, which is 2x plus 3. Okay? 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. Where now I will take 3 to come this side. So mean that we are going to have 2x minus negative 3, as I have just written here. Remember, we are looking for x. So we we'll divide both sides by 2. Okay? We we'll need to divide both sides by so I'll say over 2 and over 2. So this simply means that the, the first value of x that we are going to have is negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 2. So we we'll just take this and write it down there. So x is equal to negative 3 over 2. Or Remember, we have this other part, which is x minus 1 is equal to 0. So we just bring negative 1 this side. Okay? So now when we bring negative 1 this side, what are we going to have? We are going to have x is equal to positive 1. Remember, when negative 1, when this negative 1 comes this side, it will become positive 1. So meaning that our answer will be, x is equal to 1 or this one, x is equal to negative 3 over 2. Those are our two answers for the values of x. Like that. And let's see if there's a pending question for me. Okay. Madam Grace, she's okay. Thank you for that. Any question? Okay, so since there's no question, let's now go to our last question for today. We'll end at question 10. At question 10, and then meaning that we shall remain with 13 questions. 13 questions, we need to finish them before the end of next week. Okay? So that we can also do some of the question in paper two. Okay, let me move the board. So the first question, question 10, 
a minute, we do this. So question 10 is about a set. So this is also something that we need to appreciate as far as paper one is concerned. So question 10. So question 10 is saying the universal set. So in this question, we have a universal set, which is E. Remember, we need to appreciate the meaning of a universal set. A universal set, this is a set that contains all the elements that we are talking about. So for me, I'll just make a summary. A summary of the question. So I'll just write the summary of the question where I'll write the universal set, set A and set B. Okay, and then from there, I'm sure we can continue calculating since I believe that we have um, the question at hand. Okay, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, okay, 4, then we also have 5. Six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so just wait a bit. Just wait a bit. Then set air. It seems uh, my network has become a little bit weak because eh, my writing is not corresponding to the visibility of the board. So just a minute. So let me just try to change the port of my USB, my laptop, to another port. Okay, so we have 0 up to 9. As you can see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, like that. Okay, so just a minute, let me do this. I'm sure you're able to see. I'm sure you're able to see now. Zero up to nine. Thank you. And then set A, they have said it's a set of prime numbers. The set of prime numbers. So, meaning that since set A is a set of prime numbers, we need to identify what prime numbers are here on set A. Remember, prime numbers, these are numbers that are divisible by 1 and itself. Okay? Numbers that are divisible by 1 and itself which is a 2, 2 it is a prime number, okay? Other than 2, we have um, a 3, okay? Other than a 3, we have also a 5 and 7. So the prime numbers, remember, prime numbers, these are numbers that are divisible by 1 and itself. So these numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7, as you can see on the board. Okay? And then thereafter, we have set B. Set B, they are saying, set B, it's a set having 3, 6, and 9. It has 3, 6, and 9. So we need to appreciate this. So remember what I've done so far. I've not solved anything apart from appreciating set A. How have I appreciated set A? Set A, I've appreciated it because in this question paper, I'm sure since you have a question paper, as you can see, it's written as set A is equal to prime numbers. Set A is equal to prime numbers. So what I've done is I've identified prime numbers which are in the universal set. 
So these prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7. That's the only thing which I've done. Set B, it has been given. The inversal set, it has been given. Okay? So I've not done anything new. I've not introduced anything new. But what is the question saying now? Now let's go back to the question so that now we can try to find out what the question is saying. So the question is saying, list A union B complement. A union B complement. What is the meaning of A union B complement? A union B complement simply means that we need to combine the element which are in set A. So since we know set A, then it's, op it's okay. Okay? We are better since we know set A. But we don't know B complement. We only know B. Set B we know because it's 3, 6, and 9. But B complement we don't know. So meaning that we first need to find the B complement. When we find B complement, that's when now we are going to combine all the elements in A and B. So since A we have here, so I'll just put union here. So since 2, 3, 2, 3 5, 7 represents set A. So I'll just, I've just written this union there. Okay? After that, let's identify B complement. B complement, these are numbers that are not in the given set, but they are in the universal set. They are not supposed to be in the given set. So the given set in B, we have 3, 6, and 9. In B, we have 3, 6, and 9. So we need to ask ourselves to say, when we go in the universal set, in set E, what numbers have they not mentioned in set B? The numbers which are not in set B, then that is B complement. So these are the numbers that we need to identify and write. So you can agree with me to say we have a 0, we have a 1, we have a 2, we have a 5, we have a 4, we have, sorry, we have a 0. 0 is, is not in B. We have a 1 is not in B. Okay? And then also we have a 2. 2 is not in B. Look at 3. 3 is also in B. So mean that 3 is not part of the B complement. B 3 is not part of B complement. But 4, 4 is not in B. So I've written 4. Although I've, I've started with 5, but the order does not matter. In if you want, you can start with 4,5. Okay? There's no problem. There's no problem. Let me do this. I've erased that. Just in case there will be someone that will, is going to have a question mark to say, after why have you started with 5? But the order does not matter. That's what we need to appreciate. Okay? So after 4, we have also 5. 5 is also not there. But 6, 6 is there. Okay? 6 is there. 7, 7 is not there. 7 is not there. Apart from 7, we also have 8. 80 is also not there. Remember that as you are listing your element, we need to separate these numbers or these elements by a comma. Separate them with a comma. Very important. So now a union, union simply means that we need to combine all the elements in A and B complement. So now who can give me the answer? Who can try to give me the answer of A union B? Let me get your views. Who can try? Royce, are you able to try? A union B, you combine the element in A and the element in B complement. Royce, are you able to try?
Royce, are you there? Yes, Madam Grace? I, I can see three. Okay. So I think it's just three. Okay. Ma Madam Grace, remember that here we have identified set A. Set H2357. B complement is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. Now, if we say union, we are combining all the numbers. Bring them together, all the numbers. Okay? So, meaning that for the union now, we have 0, 1, 2. We also have 3 in A. Okay? So, we need to bring all the numbers together. So we are going to have 0, 1, 2, and then 3, 4, 5. We don't have 6 in A. We don't have 6 in B complement. So from 5, we we'll go to 7, 8. That's where we are going to end as the final answer. Hope we have appreciated. And let's see if there is someone who is behind with that concept. Give me a feedback if at all there is someone who is behind with that concept. Please give me a feedback so that I can know. Remember, let me come back again. I'm saying for the union, we need to combine everything. We are combining everything. All the numbers which are in set A together with all the numbers that we have found in B complement, of which B complement we have 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8. These numbers, we need to combine them. So when you combine them, of course, you can start with the smallest number. Even if the order does not matter, but start with the smallest number. Very important. Okay? When you start with the smallest number, at least you will not make a mistake by missing any number. Very important. Okay. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 will not be there. So, mean that from the universal set, this universal set, 6 will not be there. So, from 5, we we'll go to 7, and then 8. The way I've written it. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 will not be there. Because 6 is, is not in A and it's not in B complement. But 7 is there because 7 is in A, also in B complement. 8 will be there because it's there in B complement. But 9 will not be there because in A and B complement we don't have 9. Let me attend to your question, just in case there's a question, before doing the last question now. Any question for me? I saw a hand. Okay, yes, Madam Faustina. Ah, sorry, sir, I didn't really get what you said about the union set. My network had tripped. Okay. The union set. The example which I can give is this. Madam Faustina, at your house where you live and your neighbor's house. So if we say the union of the people who are in your house and your neighbor's house, we are simply meaning that bring all the people who are in your house and the neighbor's house, you bring them together. You are just bringing the elements which are in set A and be complement together. You just bring them all together. That's the meaning of the union. But before you bring them, it's very important for you to know the individual elements which are in set A and B complement. That's the reason why I started with identifying B complement. Because you can't bring together the elements which you don't know, the numbers which you don't know. Very important. 
Don't forget to give me a feedback and so you have understood what I've explained. Thank you very much. Anyone else with a question for me? Anyone else with a question for me? Any question for me, people? Okay. If there's no question, then let me just sketch the last question for today, which is saying the following diagram shows a, reg a regular hexagonal right pyramid. Okay. Remember, this is just a sketch, people. So, what I want to emphasize as I'm sketching this is that hexagonal. Okay, the the question is saying find the number of planes of symmetry. Okay, planes of symmetry is not different from the weight line of symmetry. It's not different. The only different part is that uh, line of symmetry deals with uh, a, a, a plain figure. Plain figure like uh, a square, a rectangle, a triangle, that's a line of symmetry. But with something solid, we normally say plain of symmetry. But the concept is the same. So now, to find the plane of symmetry, Okay, I'm sure we have this question. Okay, and we have seen it. So let me just see, uh, read through it. It's saying the following diagram shows a regular hexagonal right pyramid. Find the number of planes of symmetry of the pyramid. So remember, on this pyramid, it's going up. But the going of up normally does not matter. We need to concentrate on the as we are coming up with the, the planes of symmetry. Remember, when we cut at the base, it will go even up to the top there. So meaning that the first one, okay, the first line is this line. When we cut this plane using this line, it means that the other part and the other part will be equal. So this is the first plane of symmetry. The other plane of symmetry, we will cut it this side. Remember, I'm just sketching, but this line needs to pass at the middle, right? The line needs to pass at the middle. Let me repeat it. So at least I can try to be a little bit accurate, although it's a sketch. But what we need to appreciate to say, this is a sketch, guys. This is a sketch. Like that, okay? So I mean that so far we have two. When we cut it like this, the other part and the other part, they will be equal. The other one, oh, this one is it's not uncanny. Just a minute. I'm going to, so far. Our counted part is there. So even this one, it's also, Another plane of symmetry. So mean that so far there are three. So mean that on the edges we have done it three. Now let's go to the corners. To the corners or the vertices. The vertices will connect this corner to the, to this corner here. Okay. So this is the four. And then also connect this corner, this corner here, to the other corner there. This is the five. And then lastly, we shall connect now the last two remaining corners. Just a minute. Use black. So I'll connect this corner to that corner. So this is six. So meaning that uh, there are six planes of uh, symmetry. There are six planes of symmetry. So all in all, for you to find 
the number of planes of symmetry considered the best. Try to ask yourself to say, how are you going to cut this base in such a way that you are going to have equal, equal areas? Where you need to cut it at the middle. So start with, first of all, the edges. After the edges, you go to the corners. You say, when you connect this corner to that corner, is the shape going to be divided into two equal parts? Very important. Is there any question for me? Let me find out if at all there's any question for me. Okay. So if at all there's no any question for me, then we shall dig more tomorrow so that we see how we are going to move at least 11, question 11, question 12, 13, somewhere there. We need to be done with them so that at least as we are starting a new week, we know to say most of the question will be covered in that new week. Otherwise, thank you for making for, for being available in a short period of time. Have a good night and see you tomorrow as we will be discussing more. Thank you very much, guys. Bye.